there's a monster in the night. It was dark. The room was impossible to see, only being viewed as an endless void in which no life could ever escape. The only light was that of the moon, shimmering hopelessly against the closed curtains of the window, sealing the room from all that could ever enter. Lying in quiet peace was a boy dressed in white. Although the darkness comforted him, he found that no matter how hard he tried, his body refused to drift into unconsciousness and give him the rest he so desperately desired. Thus, he lay still in bed, waiting for the day to come and the sun to relieve him of his pain. There wasn't a single sound in that house, not a mouse to be heard or a phone to vibrate. All was still. With the slightest sound, the spell was broken. The boy couldn't help but wonder what it was. The smallest crick in the night alerted him so. The noise occurred again. Louder. Closer. The boy tried to be still. He tried to transform into stone and stay perfectly silent. He knew he wasn't in danger. Nearly every inch of his house was monitored, every security measure taken. There was no way something could have gone through. He calmed himself armed with the knowledge that nothing had broken in. But then he heard a crack. A sickening crack of a skull against stone. The sickening sound of bones grinding into dust, sharpening against razor teeth. And then the growling again. The low hum of a massive beast echoed through the slip of the door. A call of warning to tell all that were near they were already dead. He was just outside. The boy was shaking, his previous reasoning shattered by the sound of a monster outside. He had to do something. Ever so slowly, he moved his hand to the drawer beside his bed, hoping the conscience would save him from the creature that awaited him. Quiet as a mouse, he slid the drawer open, the darkness concealing his conscience from all but him. He grasped the smooth metal handle and quickly pulled the weapon to his side. Ever so slowly, he moved out from his bed, his fear rising every step he took closer to the demonic noises behind the door. CRASH! His body froze solid as a plate's final desperate shriek passed him. After an instant, the shriek was gone. The quiet filled the walls, suffocating the poor boy. Knowing the sounds would soon start again, but not knowing when. Nothing. Silence. A bead of sweat rolled down the boy's face. He worried even the slightest drop of water would reveal his location. The slightest loud breathing exposing him to the beast. The boy tried to ponder what exactly was behind the door, what exactly could make such an infernal noise. Monsters? Creatures of the night? Demons? He tried to convince himself those things didn't exist, but he couldn't seem to listen. The noise began again. The sound of meaty flesh being torn into filled the boy's mind. The melodic dripping of blood echoed against the tile floor. The boy moved again, quickly reaching the door. The last defense between him and the creature that lied beyond. The eldritch screeching continued, a noise that could only come from a creature from hell itself. The boy shaky-handed reached for the doorknob. He was terrified and he knew it. If only she was here, she wouldn't be so scared of what was behind that door. She was confident, decisive, brave. If she were here, the boy would not have a single reason to fear. But alas, it was only him. Reluctantly, he slowly turned the knob, still not wanting to see what abomination waged on the other side. Little by little, the door slid open, letting the boy see a glimpse of the kitchen. The light of the refrigerator beamed outward, exposing the horrors that awaited. A broken plate lay dead on the floor, strewn as an explosion laid uncleaned. Food and trash were thrown about as though a monster had ravaged anything it thought were edible. A pool of red liquid bled past the plate, dripping from the figure by the fridge. There stood the source of the infernal noise. The breaking of bones and the devouring of flesh. The shadow continued to feast on the ball in their hands, red dripping from their concealed mouth. They were facing the fridge, their shape being a blotch of darkness spreading a dark shadow to the boy. He readied his weapon. The boy slowly opened the door, patiently and carefully. Creak. The slightest sound erupted from the hinges of the door. The crunching stopped. The boy's face became a pale white as all color faded away. The beast's sharp ears perked to the sound. A single sound interrupting its flesh-filled feast. Its white hairs prickled outward, knowing something was there. In an instant, it faced the boy, its blood-red eyes piercing deep into his mind, stabbing through his soul and holding him to the ground. The beast's eyes seemed to glow in the darkness, the only clear part of the monster being its murderous eyes. The boy couldn't move. Fear clasped his legs in iron chains and refused to let him go. 
He again noticed the red liquid dripping down the monster's dagger-like teeth. He felt the creature's eyes pressing down on him like a wolf staring at its next meal. He knew this was the end. He stared the creature down as they both seemed to hold their breath. In the silence, the boy realized something. He was an idiot. Felix flicked the light switch on, illuminating the room in a radiant glow. His fear vanished as he realized who was in front of him. Standing by the fridge, holding nearly an entire watermelon, was Lily, wearing white pajamas with small rubber ducks on them. Felix continued to stare at Lily as he tried to shake off his sleep deprivation. Lily stood there frozen, her face covered in the watermelon she'd been previously been devouring. She slowly opened her mouth, simply saying, I was hungry. Felix stood straight up. All his previous dread and fear gone. He blankly asked, Can I have some? You may be wondering, What did I just watch? <laughs> well, what you just heard was an excerpt from the book I'm writing. The book follows the main character, Lily, a fox person called Eliaba, who lives with her best friend, Felix. The plot follows... <laughs> ha! You thought I would spill my writing secrets so easily. I'll never tell you what's inside of my book. If only there was some sort of reward system that allowed me to divulge my secrets. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this spooky writing. If you guys liked it, I might do more in the future. Have a great day and a very scary Halloween. Bye bye